Good afternoon. My name is Andrea Schroeder. I work for the City of Davison Department of Public Works, and I'm teaming up with the State of Michigan um, for groundwater education to make sure that everybody in our state, and especially in our town of Davison, knows how to keep our water clean and safe. Okay. What I'm doing is working on a grant through the City of Davison with the State of Michigan, and what they do is they pay half, and the City of Davison pays half for educational materials, things like the groundwater model, and other things that they give us in a sheet that we have to do, okay? One of the things that we need to put together for the state and for us is a delineation map, and that's what this is. And the delineation map covers the City of Davison, Davison Township, and Richfield Township. And if you look right here, this is Potter Road, this is M15, and this is the expressway right here. Now you'll notice not all of Davison is covered, and you might notice too, you'll be looking, where do I live? And you might not see that you're, you might not be covered in this area. Here's the city, like I said, the surrounding areas are covered, and this is about a seven square mile area that we cover. So not everybody in Davison would be covered, okay? But it doesn't mean that if you're not in this circle that it's not important that you guys participate in having clean water because a lot of us, like myself, lives outside the circle and I have my own well and I want to make sure that I don't contaminate my water or my neighbor's water or they don't also contaminate mine, okay? So what this is is the city of Davison has five wells within the city that we pump water to our customers. And within, the within are the five different wells, and the state requires that we go a mile radius to cover the wellhead protection area around each well. Okay, so that determines how this delineation map is covered for us through the state of Michigan. Okay, once we do our delineation, then all the educational things can start. And this is one of the things that we're doing, and right now we're targeting seventh grade. And eventually, hopefully, we will also be able to take the fourth graders in for tours of our water treatment plant. Okay, but right now we're targeting seventh grade, but that doesn't mean that's the only grade we're going to cover. We're going to cover young children, your age, we're going to cover adults, all the way, you know, up. We're not targeting just a certain age group, because it's important that everybody knows about groundwater. Okay? especially homeowners, especially you, because you guys will grow up one day and own your own homes and have well, wells and things of that nature, okay? Does anybody know how much water that we have that is fresh water in the world? How much fresh water is there? Nope, 3%. Does anybody know how much of the 3% is drinkable? 1% is drinkable, so that's not very much, is it? Okay, so that's why we as a group and as a state and as a community have to try to keep our resources, like our water resource, very clean. How many people live in the city of Davison? Raise your hand. They know they live in the city limits. Okay, how many live in Davison Township? And how many live in Richfield Township? Okay, how many of you know, and you might not know, if you have your own wells at home? Okay. How many think that they're on county water through the Davison Township area? Or some parts of Richfield Township are on county water? Okay, some people aren't really sure. If you live in the city of Davison, you're on the city of Davison's system, which this school is also on the system, okay? And what we do is we pump from our five wells located in the different areas of the city, and it's pumped to our brand new water treatment plant. I'm assuming everybody knows where Thompson School is. Most of you probably went there for kindergarten. And does everybody know that there's a water tower that you can see? Any guesses on how much water the water tower holds? Any guess? No? Anybody want to take a guess at how much they think that water tower holds? Yes. Nope, more than that. 10,000? No? More. Nope, 1 million gallons of water. Yes. And right now, on a daily basis, our treatment plant will pump approximately 750,000 gallons of water a day out into the community, okay? We just started the, well, or the water treatment plant. It should be finished soon, and hopefully there'll be tours in June or July, so you guys can watch for that in the paper, like the Davison Index, okay? So if anybody wants to come through and look at the treatment plant, they'll be more than welcome to do that, okay? 
but that's where our water gets pumped to our new water treatment plant. It gets filtered in there, clean, different chemicals are added, and then it gets pumped out to the community. Okay? In the city of Davison, we give out water bills that helps pay for our water treatment plant and everything that goes on with it. Do you guys want to take a guess at how many gallons on the average a month that a city resident in a house pumps through their house that they get billed for on the average? Does anybody want to take a guess? 2,000, very close. Very close. Any other guesses? 3,000 gallons of water on the average is what a homeowner in the city of Davison uses on a, in a month. Okay? Any questions so far? No? Okay. This right here is a water well bit. This is what drills a well. Okay? So when I, let's say you have to get a new well or you're building a new house and you live out farther and you're going to have a well put in. This is what they bring, but in a lot bigger size. This is a small version of a water well bit. Um, and they bring it in, and it drills through the ground, through the different layers of the ground, to the aquifer or where they can finally start to hit water. Okay? So that's what's used, and it drills through the ground. And then when they hit water, then it comes through. They sink a pipe and a pump, and that's how it's pumped into your home. Okay? Now, with the city of Davison, we have our own wells that were drilled. The water goes through water mains, through the city, and into our water treatment plant, and then dispersed out to our customers from there. Okay, does that make sense to everybody so far? Okay. Now, yesterday we had learned about um, city water, and she had mentioned that we are served by five wells around the, the city. That's different than what we learned yesterday. We learned that from city water, where do you get the water from? Where does the city water come from? What types of water sources? Shane? Like the rivers? Like the rivers and the lakes. We're, you're actually drinking well water here at school. Anyone surprised to hear that? You all thought it was city water, didn't you? It is from the wells around, just like a well I have at home. However, it does taste a little different because the difference is between my own home well and the city wells or is that the city wells go through the, the water treatment plant, whereas my own home well doesn't. That's why there's a difference between your major cities and how unique Davidson is, is that they have their own wells. That's correct. Now here's a question. If you run your water and it looks kind of brownish, cloudy, does that mean it's not safe to drink, yes or no? Not necessarily, that's correct. Sometimes the city gets a water main break, and what will happen is that we'll have to go in and we'll have to fix that break. So we'll have to dig up the water main, because it's running water out of the main, and we'll have to make the repair. And when we have to make that repair, we have to shut down the water in that area. And sometimes when we turn the water back on, I will get calls at the city and they'll say, my water is dirty, it looks terrible, I'm not drinking it, it's not safe. It is safe, but most people that have nasty looking water don't want to drink it anyway, correct? So what we tell people is run your cold water tap for 10 or 15 minutes throughout your house until it clears, and that'll usually help clear it. Other ways that sometimes your water can be discolored is if there's pipes that are going bad in a home, that sometimes that'll cause in one area, not, uh, not necessarily throughout the entire house, but throughout different, like the bathroom or maybe just the kitchen, you'll have a color coming through or a rusty color. Sometimes that's, that shows that sometimes the pipes in the home are starting to go bad or in that specific area of the house, okay? So that's some other ways that you know you know, not all the time if a water if water doesn't look good through a glass doesn't mean that it's not safe to drink, but you should always get it checked or call and ask, okay? W another thing that we're trying to do, and this is my groundwater model, um, this is going to show you different sizes of wells, different depths of wells. Well number one and number seven are very deep wells, okay? They go all the way into the aquifer, they're hundreds of feet deep, okay? Number three and number four, those are more shallow wells. A lot of our wells within the city of Davison that homeowners do have are very shallow wells. Um, some of the ones that we've had abandoned so far are 95 to 125 feet deep, okay? So they're not very, very deep wells. The number two and the number six, those are your deeper wells. Those are your probably most like common for a homeowner, 250 feet, 300 feet deep. Okay, just for an example, so you have an idea of depth of what we're talking here. Okay, 
These are the different layers of clay and earth that are in the area, and I, we picked this groundwater model because it's most like the Davison area, okay? Um, when we purchased this, we asked, you know, we want to kind of, when we're showing people, we want them to be able to see what our earth is like here in our area. And this is what Davison, if we started digging and going hundreds of feet into the ground, would basically look like, okay? And that's why we picked this one. So we have the different layers, or the different depths in wells, and then we have our fractured bedrock, okay? This well right here has been contaminated. See how the red is in there? And we can put a little bit more in there. And see how it starts pushing through the aquifer? See how it's going through that bedrock aquifer? And it's pushing through, okay? What that's doing is now it's traveling through the aquifer, through the fractured bedrock, and it's now affecting my neighbor, okay? So if you'll look here, my neighbor is pumping from their well, and they turn on their water, and their water now is pink. So what's happening is anytime somebody pours anything that they shouldn't down an open well, they contaminate quick because it goes right through this pipe. There's nothing stopping it, and it goes straight to the aquifer if it's dug that deep. If it was a more shallow well, it would start affecting these layers of soil and eventually pushing through, or if not, it would hit our more shallow wells, okay? So what we do is we want to cap these wells. Eventually, we want to cap wells. Any wells that are not in use or people are not using for irrigation purposes and they have already have a well that they're pumping to their home, and some people have two wells, and they're not using the old one, and they don't want to have to pay for the other one to get abandoned, they will pour things down. Or if somebody sells a home and they don't know, and the next people come in and think, hey, that's cool, I'll just pour. You know, they lift the cap, and they'll say, oh, I can just pour my stuff down there. And they'll tell the kids, oh, here's some oil and some gas. I don't know what to do with it. Just pour it down that pipe. And they don't know. People aren't educated on what these pipes can do. And what it does is it's a straight shot all the way down and see how it's affected our whole aquifer. And it could affect for miles, okay, depending on how much is poured and how much actually sinks through. Yes? Does it depend how the contaminants move through the different types of rock and soil? And Absolutely, it does determine how it does. Well, it depends on how the fractured bedrock is in the ground. That's a good question. Does the water always flow under in the ground from north to south or east to west? Yes or no, everybody? No, that is correct. It flows whatever way it can get through the fractured bedrock. So it doesn't have a certain way it's going to go. So it could affect somebody quicker than it affects somebody else. But once it's contaminated, it can flow through for, for quite a long ways. Now, Mrs. Schroeder and I were talking last hour about how education is very important because I can still remember back in the 70s and 80s when my dad would take the do oil changes on our cars and he would take the oil and pour it in ditches. And everyone on the street used to do that all the time. And because we were uneducated, we didn't know that was contaminating our own groundwater supply. The other thing I want you to notice that these are, let's say this well is pumping and this is somebody's house and now their well is being contaminated and contaminating into their home. Not only does it do that, but look at our naturally flowing artesian wells and our springs. Now it's into our springs and in into our rivers, okay? And that can happen also. It doesn't necessarily just hit a homeowner, okay? Sometimes it hits our lake. See, our lake is starting to turn pink. It affects many different things that people don't think about. And when it affects our rivers and lakes, what else does it also affect? I'm sorry? Us and who else? Animals, that's right, wildlife, and any vegetation around these lakes and streams. And so they're also affected every time that they go and drink from those rivers and streams. Are you saying that the lake is impacted by the contamination? You could be. A lot of different things you'll be able to tell if there's a high level of oils or gas in a water area because how it sits on the top of the water. So it all just depends. Um, if somebody thinks there's a problem with a river or a lake, which they've, you know, checked out before in parts of the area in, in, in Michigan, that they'll have, the state will come out or somebody will come out and do water testing or ground testing on these areas to see what the levels are. 
and that's how, how they'll check for problems. And just like our water, or you know, if you think you're having a problem with your water or your parents do, they can go and have their water tested to make sure and check the levels of different things in their water. Like if somebody said something bad about their their food, okay, food, and you like sent them to mom, mm -hmm. would they be charged? Yes. Anybody that now is caught contaminating um, the ground or the water, and they do get caught, they are held responsible. Like, how do you tell them? Like, do you send them to mom or dad? You know, I don't know. I think it depends on what it is, possibly, and how much. But that's something I'd have to look into. I'm not sure because I know that at the conference I went to a few months ago, they said that they are really starting to crack down more than ever now if they can catch the people or the person or the company that's doing the contamination. Um, I know that they try to get them to clean it up. I know they are fined. Whether they do jail time or not, I'm not sure. Okay, But that also leads to a good point. We, are, we know now that we're contaminated because we can see the red throughout. Okay. Now let's say we know we're contaminated. What are we going to do at this point? Okay, Can we clean up the aquifer? Can we dig out the soil that's been contaminated? In some instances, yes, depending on how big the spill is or how small it is and how much ground and area it's covered. Sometimes they'll clean it. How much do you guys think a cleaning could cost? Uh, a lot, thousands, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars sometimes, okay? to bring it in and then the state has to come in and the EPA comes in and a lot of different people come in to try to get things taken care of the right way. A lot of times if the area cannot be completely cleaned, then that area is banned from ever having a well on it or having a water source on it and other things again, depending on what the contamination is and how bad and how far it traveled, okay? If you'll look here, we have an underground storage tank, which is a UST, which is kind of like at a gas station. All gas is um, confined to underground storage tanks, okay? And then a septic tank. Some of us live it out kind of more in the country like I do, and we have a septic tank behind our house instead of being hooked to like what's considered a city sewer or the county sewer, okay? And these two things can also leak. And when they do, they also push contaminants okay, into the ground, and it might not affect our water as quickly as this pipe being right into the aquifer and it hits it really quick, but with these, they start to pour into the ground, into the layers, and they might not all push all the way through to the aquifer, but eventually they might affect our person here at well number three because they have a shallow well at their home, so that might eventually affect them, okay, which it also affects the whole ground in that area, okay. Same with pouring something just down into the lawn. If you pour contaminants, a lot of people do. They don't know what to do. They figure, oh, it'll kill my grass, I'll just reseed, okay? No big deal. Well, what they don't realize is it does push through the ground and eventually it's, it's contaminating, okay? And with large amounts, it can eventually hit our more shallow well customers, yes. Does it affect our water when we like pour like pot, like pop into the grass and stuff? Not so much pop, it's more gases, oils, paints, thinners, um, you know, anything that's a contaminant, anything that, a lot of fertilizing is not good. For example, I know that a lot of people fertilize their lawn, okay? You have to watch and fertilize in moderation so you don't fertilize too much because that can have bearing on how it affects our water and our soils. I know that my, I don't know if this is in there, my mother always told me that not to pour cooking oil or cooking grease down the drain. Mm -hmm. Is that strictly because it clogs the drain or does it contaminate our water? Most of the time, I, I, from what I know, it clogs. But I'm, I'm thinking if it's a lot and eventually pushes down, it depends, I guess, on if it hardened into the ground because you know how that stuff sometimes hardens. Um, no. Yes. How about the, the stuff that they spray on the grass to help it grow? It's not good. Anything that's used on a lawn or even in fields, you know how farmers use a lot of pesticides and herbicides and all different kinds of things are used? If it's used in moderation and you follow the directions and you know what you're doing, usually it's fine. But soon as people don't follow or know what they're doing and they just pour it and pour it, you know, that's a problem because in fields, fields have runoffs. So runoffs might not affect the ground right away or the soil, but it might 
have a runoff into a lake or a stream that's in that area, and those things do affect those too, okay? So runoff is a big thing that affects places. Um, like in, in the city of Davison, we have every parking lot. Anytime a car leaks oil or gas, that's runoff. It can run off into different areas, and that affects that affects water or our water could affect the sewers, many different things. Okay, so yes, runoff is a big one that also has an effect on it. So, like I said, depending on what the contamination is and how bad it is, sometimes it can be cleaned. Sometimes it takes years. Um, sometimes people don't want to take blame and say that it was their problem, especially if it comes to like a gas station and things like that. So that's why things are cracking down more in the state and all over actually the United States on, on um, water and keeping it clean and safe. Does anybody have any questions about the groundwater model? <laughs> or comments? When we're at class is done, you guys are more than welcome to come up here and, and look at it, okay? This drainage tube right here. What that is is let's say we contaminated here and then it runs through our fractured bedrock and this is our neighbor a couple doors down and they have a deep well also. What that's doing is pumping now into their house. This is their house. We're turning on the faucet and now it's pumping into their home. Once you started it, it wasn't there for a little bit. It was clear. And now we're pumping that into somebody else's house down the road. And now also, like I said before, it's now into our natural springs and our rivers. Yes. Um, how long is the process of water from home to septic tank to get back to the house exactly? You know, I don't really know. That's something I would have to research, to be real honest with you. I, I'm not real sure on that one. Okay? That's a good question but I will research that for you and see if I can get an answer for you. One of the guys at my work might know. Okay. Yes. Is it like really expensive down the road? Yes. How much damage could it do? It could do a lot of damage and it would have to be dug up. The whole septic field would probably have to be, depending on where it busts, because there's lines ran for a septic field, there's a tank and then there's lines ran in, in a yard. And depending on where the break is, the whole yard might have to be dug up. And for them to be able to put another septic in that same area, I don't know if they'd be able to do it. They might have to move it to a different part of the yard. It depends. I think it has um, some determination on where the break is and how bad it is and, and how, how long until it got caught. You know what I mean? Until somebody noticed it and started the repair on it. But it does happen. Same with underground storage tanks leaking. Um, Sometimes people don't notice until it's too late and it's already done the damage. So if the damage is done, now we have to assess it and the cleanup has to begin. And the longer it seeps into the ground, the more damage is done and the more the cost is to come and clean. Good. Yes? Um, what is wrong when your like, water pressure is like, very low? Do you have to like, turn your knobs, like, nozzle a lot to get water to come out? Water pressure can be a lot of different issues. We get water pressure problems at the city and they'll call and say, my water pressure is bad. Um, sometimes it, the water pressure issue is from a clog and a water softener. Okay, the water's going through the softener and something's getting blocked there. Um, sometimes it's a certain part of the house, the faucet might be going bad and the pressure is bad in that one area of the house. There's different reasons that water pressure can go. Um, sometimes if we have a water main break in the city, water pressure will be different in that area because of the water main breaking. And then as soon as we get it fixed, it'll go back to normal. So there's different different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. How do you clean a septic tank? How do you clean a septic tank? They bring in, it's a septic, a sewer cleaner, okay? It's a big round, it's a very big piece of machinery. They bring it in and they have a big pipe that they go and there's a lid that's dug in the ground. That's, this is how I've known it's been done, okay? You have to dig up the lid and they take the lid off and then they can clean that septic tank, okay? And it goes into that holder of the sewer machine and then they take care of it from that, okay? Does that give you kind of a good idea? Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's, a, it's called a sewer machine. Good, excellent questions. Yes. Um, you know how oil can like float on water? Mm -hmm. Is it possible that if um, oil, someone threw oil down mm -hmm. to the ground and it 
found a pocket that had water in it that it could just stay there until like the water drained out? It possibly could. It possibly could. It's so hard to say because depending on where it flows, you know, it's, it's, it very well could. It's a possibility, yes. Is it possible to have ground and city water? Well, yes. We do have some people in the city of Davison that have their own well and also have are hooked up to city water, which are wells. Okay, we pump through wells, but they have both. And, but there are some farmers that are hooked up to county water that live in the townships, but they still have irrigation wells for their crops and things like that, and they still have naturally pumping wells from the ground. So yes, you can have both. But what we're trying to do at the city is um, we're trying, we just received another grant, and that grant is going to be for plugging abandoned old wells. So if you do have two wells and you're not using one of them, instead of keeping it because it's such a big thing that contaminants can get into it on accident, that we are going to help pay for those wells to be, to be abandoned properly, okay? And does anybody have a guess on how much you think it costs to abandon a well? Not so much, no. It's around $250 to $500 depending on the depth of the well, okay? And some homeowners will have it done when they get a new well drilled or get onto county water if they, you know, have to go to county water from their house. But other people will not, okay? And that's where we're finding that's the problem, where wells are getting contaminated and people aren't educated, okay? So what we'll do in the next couple years is we will be plugging wells for people within this delineation in this wellhead protection area or source water protection area that we'll be able to go in, help these people in this area if they want it plugged, and they will be able to get it plugged for free. Okay, and we'll, we'll handle that for them. So then there'll be less places of possible contamination sources for our ground and, our, and for our water. Okay, does any, um, anybody have an idea how they plug a well? No? Okay. What they do is they take a pipe and they push it down inside the well as far down as they can go with it. And then what they do is they put a cement mixture inside of it. Okay, and then the cement mixture keeps raising up and raising up till it gets to the top and then they usually leave it overnight until it hardens and then they'll come back the next day they'll usually cut the pipe and after that and put a cap on it so nothing will ever be able to be poured down that well again okay no contamination no oils no nothing because it's cemented so nothing will ever be able to get in there okay and that's how they do that yeah how much does that cost my groundwater model costs four hundred dollars this thing costs 400, or I'm sorry, $800. $400 from the city of Davison and $400 from the state of Michigan. $800 total for this. Absolutely. And it comes, yeah, with all the dyes and all the, yeah, gadgets and everything in the holder. <laughs> so it was $800. What's that? I would think so if it did, yeah. It's pretty heavy. So, could you be like changing your oil on like a cement, mm -hmm. you know, and some of it could get on the cement, would that like go through the cement and go down? Not necessarily it won't go through the cement or an asphalt driveway or anything like that, but it could run off. It could run off when it rains or it could just, if there's enough it'll run off onto a, a yard or a lawn or an area and that can start contaminating the ground. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it depends. Depends on what I do. Any other questions? Yes. What's the most common reason for a burst in a septic tank? A burst in a septic tank, a lot of the times for a septic, it's the age. Um, the older they are, sometimes there'll be a, um, a pipe will break. Usually age. From what I'm, from what I'm aware is age. About how much of Davison's water is contaminated? You know, I don't know that. Not too much from what we know, water-wise. Um, we're doing studies all the time. I work with another company for our source water protection grants. Um, we had to go around and look, though, within the Davison area and within the circled area of how much we think of it could possibly 
decontaminated from sources that we know are out there, okay? And sources of contaminations are any parking lot because there's runoff, okay? Um, any big, like, paint graph because they have um, change oil and vehicles, but they do that a certain way so everything's taken care of. Okay? Well, I think you guys did a really good job. And if you guys have any questions, like I said, just let me know. You guys can, um, when class is done, you guys are more than welcome to come over and look at the groundwater model and the map and see if you can find out where you live. And other than that, I think we're finished. Thank you.